Hi there, Johnny here from johnnylipsomstudios.co.uk and in today's video we are going to look at a question I get asked quite a lot and it's to do with effects and where and when and how we use them particularly whether we insert a reverb or we send to a reverb bus I get that a lot I get people who are set, who are saying, "Hey, my system's getting bogged down with using a particular reverb, um, and I'm maxing out my my processing." And so, I would do a Skype session with them, and they'll show me what they have going on. And quite often, they will have lots of reverbs instantiated on their tracks, um, a little bit like this. So they would have say these four um, backing vocal tracks here. Now I already have them set up to a bus, to a reverb bus, but let's just say I didn't have that and um, I wanted to put reverb on all of those tracks. This is one way to do it and this is what happens most often um, that I see quite a lot is people just put a reverb on each track. Now, in the case of something like backing vocals, you want them to sound like they are in the same space. So the way to do that is to send to a bus rather than putting the reverb on each track and having the same settings, because each instance on each track takes up processing power from your CPU, because it has to process that audio through that reverb every single time. And so you can very quickly, if you have lots and lots of tracks, this session does not have lots of tracks, but you can end up with a situation where your system is being bogged down by just sheer the amount of processing going through reverbs and delays, um, particularly um, impulse response reverbs. They are a big CPU hog. So you need to use those on a bus rather than uh, on individual inserts. So in this instance, I would not use reverbs on inserts because I want these backing vocals to sound like they are in one space. Therefore, I have the reverb set with the same set with one set of settings and then I just send to it like I have here. Um, so I'm going to take those off because I don't want those. So these reverb, these are um, backing vocals on this reverb, they sound like this. If I just solo them. In God we trust, says on the bill. Okay, I'll play that one more time. In God we trust, says on the bill. Okay, so quite a lot of ambience there, quite a lot of uh, space because I want these backing vocals to sit back a little bit underneath the lead vocal. So I have these kind of a little bit wetter than I would for a lead vocal. There is an occasion where I might actually have a reverb on individual tracks. And the case for this in this particular song would be these two guys here, these two guitars. And the reason why I have these two guitars with a room reverb instantiated on them is because I want these two to have a different space, a different ambience, different settings from the settings for my background vocals. So I have completely different settings for these two. And I'm going to show you what those sound like. I'm going to solo, actually I'm going to ungroup them first, and I'm going to play just this one, the tremolo guitar on the left, and then you can hear the reverb tail on this one compared to the reverb tail on the other one. All right, so I'll play them both one at a time. So that has a really short reverb tail, but this other guy over here is a bit different. Check this out. All 
Okay, so that guitar um, has a completely different sound. It has, uh, it's much wetter. It's much more like the backing vocals in terms of its, um, the amount of reverb tail that's going on there. Um, but it's, it's not quite the same setting as the backing vocals. So I have these set up on their own because I know that they are individual to the rest of the, of the mix. The rest of the mix, uh, it, these are unique. Uh, and I wanted them to have their uh, own unique sound, their own unique space, which is why I have them set up as I do. So that would be an occasion where I would use a reverb as an insert. But for the most part, if I'm grouping tracks together and giving them an ambience, I'm going to use a send to a reverb channel over here, or a delay channel. I'm going to do that every time, because it saves on processing power phenomenally um, because you can very easily get bogged down with lots of instantiations of reverbs and as I said particularly impulse response reverbs like in in the case of studio one we have the open air if I can find that here it is this fantastic little guy here which looks like this this is an impulse response uh, reverb so the spaces have been modeled um, and they're fantastic, but, and you can really go to town on the EQ of the, the reverb as well. Um, so this is really, really cool, but it uses a lot of processing power. So this is something you would definitely use on a bus. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to take that off because I don't want that for this song. So there you have it. I would use a bus for an effect if I have lots of channels going to the same space, but I would use it as an insert on maybe one or two channels on a rare occasion where I want them to have their own distinct space in the mix, which doesn't happen very often the way I mix. So I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please hit the like button. And I would appreciate it also if you could subscribe to the channel. Um, by doing so, you'll get a notification letting you know when the next video is out and up on the, on the channel. Please also, it would be really great if you could actually comment on this video and let me know your experiences of sends versus inserts, inserts versus sends, whichever way around you want to call it. Um, and let me know how it's been affecting your mixing, how it's been affecting your processing on your computer. Uh, and we can start a conversation there and I can get some more tailored individual help to you um, to deal with those issues. So go ahead, like the video, subscribe to the channel, add a comment, and let's get a discussion going on this particular subject. So until the next time, bye for now.